Hi guys and welcome to The Weekender, a journey through the sights and the sounds of the gaming industry. Led by the ice cream brothers themselves, the Ben and Jerry, and Brother Lloyd's in Hola. here at the house too. Right, this week guys, saw the release of a video diary of my <laughs> dream project. I got to recreate the Hero Quest board in beautiful detail it's something i've wanted to do for 10 years and it is finally there it's finally done and oh guys i was like oh uh, absolute dream come true it was it was fabulous working with it it took 10 years because well i, I say it in the video um <laughs> it's a very time consuming thing to potentially do. I originally was going to do it using her start blocks, but the, the process of casting all them blocks would have taken way too long. When 3D printers arrived on the scene, I thought, oh, I'll just 3D print it. And plenty of people have, and they're gorgeous boards. But once again, the t it's a time-consuming process to, to 3D print all that out. So when the Dungeons and Lasers stuff landed with the, the 25 mil half walls, I thought, oh, this is it. This could yeah. finally be it. And uh, the so we have a it's an hour long video, but it's yeah, good I was gonna say it's a mammoth video, but from right from start to finish, actually yeah. painted and everything. Yep, and we do all the problem solving and stuff like like it's not a straightforward build, you know. Dungeon and Lasers wasn't designed for this, so you know we, we customize it a lot, and we you know we we have a we come across like problems and things that we you know the design decisions I suppose. Yeah, as like the doors. Through. Yeah, so for example, how we how we approach the doors, um, how we reduce the wall size even further, because of that horrific one square wide corridor that the Hero Quest has running from the left. Yeah, to the right. that's yeah, so. that's what I was looking at. I was like, how did you even get that? So the 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 Dungeons and Lasers um, uh, tiles are basically a two by two grid. Okay, yeah. so, it, it, so there's four squares in a tile okay so what it did was um i uh, laid out the base and then we we measured everything so a lot of what you see plugged in there the walls we drilled new holes and things like that oh. okay all right together Never um, we could have just clipped the things off and just glued it together but um i wanted to make this as strong as possible because we actually built it that the board separated in three parts to make it easier to store and to transport. It, it's, 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 the board is in three, three parts. Mm. So um, we can, whenever we're moving it around, like I brought it home. If you're, if you're a backstage, if you're a cult of games member, sorry. Um, this weekend on Sunday, uh, I'm going to show you guys that this project hasn't finished for me. This was actually just a starting point. Um, so I'm recreating um, Hero Quest in a one-off custom way um, as an heirloom. I've got to say, it, 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 as an heirloom, I'm hoping that it'll be uh, something that not only will I play with my children, but I'm hoping I get the opportunity to you to play it with my grandchildren, and that they they like it enough that it, it it's passed it's passed on. So I'm trying to create a one-off heirloom for the family. So it, it's been a it's been a wonderful wonderful experience you know it's like all of our childhood memories lloyd of of hero quest has been coming back there are issues and i'll talk about those in xlbs but yeah the board the board separates it's easy to transport um i'm very very pleased there was a deliberate mistake that was <laughs> spotted. um one room uh, was slightly wrong but it was very fixable. Uh, it was fixable by adding, it was missing a wall. So the Sir Ragnar or whatever it's uh, uh, room, uh, I'd forgot to split it into three. We had originally laid it all out to be perfect, but at some point, well, just Something with the confusion of everything, yeah, one wall went missing in the process. But what it did is I've, I've actually created it as a wee set in piece wall and it just works beautifully. So much so I'm tempted to do a few more set in piece walls just to divide rooms up further here and there. Um, I have some ideas for um, other dungeon projects. I've really enjoyed building dungeons. And, you know, 
you know, there, there's a thing about, you know, there's a thing about me in dungeons, man. You know, it's, I just, I just happen to have a, no one taking the bait on that one though. God, no, I'm trying to resist Jerry. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm trying. I'm looking at the possibility of doing another couple of dungeon projects, um, just to show some other approaches uh, to dungeon uh, to d- dungeon development. But it's 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 very very interesting, and I've got to say, the more that I worked with the. The Hero Quest board itself, whenever I first saw it, was was, uh, was inspirational. I'd never seen a board game like it, and I loved it. However, whenever I saw individual dungeon tiles, I thought, oh, "This is the future! Dungeon tiles! Oh, it's so much better than than a, than a Hero Quest board because a Hero Quest board never changes, but dungeon tiles they can go all over the place." I've almost come full circle now where I've realized that uh, that there's there's a fundamental flaw within dungeon tiles as well, and that it's a very almost static one-directional route that often builds up with dungeon tiles. And uh, if you're playing with youngsters, the Hero Quest board is absolutely ideal because, you know, it's, it's there, it's easy for them to very quickly lay out a dungeon. You know, it's... Uh, and you can you can kind of plot different pathways and move back and forth to to individual rooms. So I, I really liked uh, what uh, uh, what we had here with the the more static layout. So much so that um, I'm I'm looking at the possibility of uh, exploring the uh, two more options to see. Uh, how dungeon builds uh, could go. I might do it with the dungeons and laser stuff um, because it's very easy to work with. I like the plastic. It, it, it's very, very quick to work with. Um, so yeah, I've, I've two experimental, you know, it's that second album, Jerry, it has mm, to be yeah, a difficult follow-up. Jazz Odyssey kind of thing, you know? So it says, so I have two experimental um, the dungeon approaches that um, I'm hoping um, uh, to be able to um, embark on um, because it, it, it's uh, I think if ever I stop doing this I, I could have a career as a dungeon designer and I'm, I'm fairly certain there'll be areas of Berlin um, that would be very happy to, to, to have me on board <laughs> You can get a higher Yelp review than a certain other. <laughs> so yeah, the dungeon, the the recreation of the Hero Quest board, a dream project, guys, absolute dream project. If you haven't seen it, go and spend a, a spend a, a happy hour watching a, a one day build that took five days. Um, <laughs> so, An but it's savage it, style one day build. Yeah, if, uh, but the end result, the the end result was was totally worth it. I I'm I'm over the moon. With what we with what we actually achieved there, so. there'll be a link in the description below. Yep, so you better go and watch that in its entirety. So yeah. Um, cool. Other other big update is on Sunday we are launching the Path of Conquest. Okay, so this is a slow grow um, league that we're that we're going to be participating in. Um, uh, where we uh, gradually over the next. Um, two or three months, uh, we're going to build up milestone by milestone um, armies uh, for uh, Conquest. So uh, uh, Conquest is incredible art, incredible miniatures. um, And this is a great way, if you're ever thinking it might be something you want to jump in on, now is a good time to do it. There's some, I think there's special offer bundles and stuff up there at the moment as well, where you can get, uh, if you get a two-player starter box, you get two additional... Uh, unit boxes, boxes. yeah for free and stuff like that so it's a great time to to jump into it myself jerry justin and john are going to embark upon it so we are we each have taken a faction as well and we're going to be doing it so you can kind of follow along get involved you even got turned into cool little characters as well we've already learned that i look amazing as a brit drone you do in this in this first video which is like a sort of a, a primer a yeah. primer and yeah. introduction justin goes through the four factions you're mm. going to be working on 
mm -hmm. with Leo from Par Parabellum. Can I just uh, say, look at that artwork. Yeah, the artwork that they sent through was amazing. You know, it, it's just incredible, the, the mm. artwork in that game. There's the four of us. Oh, here, well, that gives away the factions that we're doing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. and so there's no longer a surprise on the factions anymore. Well, so there's no it, surprise because uh, Justin tells everyone what oh, factions just... are working <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Plus Parabellum have been sharing them this week as well. Have yeah, they so. been sharing them as well, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm taking on the Hundred Kingdoms. Uh, Jerry's taking on the Spires. Uh, Justin's taking on the, the Wagholm. And mm. John is taking on the Nords. Look at there we are. There we are. Yeah. yeah, you'll see more of them as as the videos come out. But um, yeah, the bundles. Just before you move on, the, here is the information on the bundles. So if you come on over to on tabletop dot com uh, and drop in there, you can get links to bundles and stuff that'll help you jump in with what we're doing. Yeah, sweet. We're selling so, this stuff on the store as well, aren't we? We are, yeah. yeah. And there's also um, coming up fairly soon, I believe, is we're going to have the releases of the actual little starter sets as well. Um, so Parabellum are doing those, and obviously we're selling them, and a bunch of other retailers will be as well. But you can pick them up between now and like Christmas, I think, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah, so look, while the world is still hovering in around lockdown and we're <laughs> and we're deciding whether we're in lockdown or going back into lockdown or, or, or not... You know, now's a good time to do a slow grow league. Let's just build an army. Let's just get together and build some flipping armies and, and, and enjoy <laughs> ourselves. You know, it's like, you know, the world's gone mad, but that's all right. As I say to Andrea, do you know what? Lock the doors. <laughs> just uh, lock the doors. I, you know, so. I see over in the store we're selling the base expansions. They're coming out as a pre order. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah so the yeah. base expansions are there because, as we've hinted to in the past, Keep your round bases. Don't just bat yeah. them onto the squares. Or well, that's why I thought I'd bring it up because obviously there is something coming. Wink, yeah. wink. Yeah. <laughs> you can wink all you want. I don't know exactly what's coming, but I have oh. a fair idea what's coming. So. I was hoping if I winked enough, you would spill the beans. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right. So anyway, look, it's a great opportunity. You know, uh, uh, this is our first um, uh, uh, shot at a, a new format for slow grow leagues that we're going to try. Um, so we really do appreciate if it's if it's a game you're interested in, get involved. Um, because it gives us an, a, a chance to explore this format of um, uh, of us working together. We're going to have achievement badges. It all works off the project system. Um, oh, we've got loads of content scheduled between now and then. We have some live get-togethers uh, planned for the Discord where we're going to hobby together and uh, and the like. So there is some... There, there's a lot of stuff in the, in the works there, guys, for yeah. it. So um, There's going to be quite a lot of sort of help for people who don't like want to learn about it it's step by step as well yeah. so i believe it's going to be like pdfs and that kind of thing where you can It'll follow exactly what you need to buy and that kind of mm -hmm. thing so and we sit down uh, you know it's one of the great things about this particular slow grow league and this this format that we're exploring is we actually get to, to get the developers to take us on that journey as well so whenever we come to discuss the milestones and look at um, how the army list expands at each point of the milestone, you know, we have a Parabellum guy there advising and saying, look, this is, this is what you can do. This is why you might do it. This is how you would play it. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's a guided experience. It's like a worldwide boot camp. <laughs> In many ways, in many ways, you know, it's looking at that possible that that opportunity to um, uh, get the expert help there to take us through it. So we're not stumbling along. Um, you you can do anything you want, by the way. You don't have to follow what we're doing, but it's worth watching what we're doing. And if you wanted to follow along, you can. Um, and we have the the expertise there to to guide us through. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. I am really looking forward to it. So, right. Wait. Okay. Next up, it's time. I can feel it in my bones. It's time for indie of the week, bitches. Oh, who we got this week? <laughs> Uh, so this was another Jerry pick. So we had Jerry picking last week, and Jerry's picked again this week, uh, and it is for Oakbound Studio. So yeah, based right. on height currently. <laughs> okay, so we're deciding who picks. 
<laughs> oh, I'm never get to pick. Oh. So this is, <laughs> we're saying this is a top shelf. <laughs> okay, right. Take us through it, Jerry. Who have you picked and why did you pick him? Well, um, picked Oakbound for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we looked at him a while ago when he was doing a um, Kickstarter for Dreamstone, which is going to be a little hex based board game based on a 90s cartoon. And it was really cute, evocative figures but then when i was started delving around through uh the stuff that he works on for his own game which is called the woods i find some really really nice figures with a, a very unusual old hammer feel to them yeah. plus uh the background and setting is fairly unique um so if you just, click on to the just woods, to just to help anybody, it, it it's called Oakbone Studio, but the website is what pro prop prop, oh, prop workshop. workshop. Yeah, because he, he makes props for TV and film and stuff as well, and you can hire him to sculpt and bits and bobs. But if if you do yeah. a search for Oakbone Studio, you'll find him anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but if you go into the woods, uh, this is really where it lies. A lot of the stuff is recognizable from fantasy. So cool. But it's generally because fantasy have gone in and stolen these creatures from European myth and folklore. So this is just taking them and putting it back into a more folklore focused. They're kind of original setting. context, yeah. the original yeah, yeah. setting. Here, is that a femur that I saw back there? That it, Myri. It, it, it was a femur. Yeah. It, it, it has that. Oh, sorry, it was a yet. what? Have I just said that? Femur. I don't know I where you are. I think you're fine. Femur. <laughs> there you go. Is this that, where you want to be? That, yeah. Well, that's where he wants to be, yeah. They look like, they look like femurs to me. Yeah. So uh, as we sort of wander our way through here, uh, I'll explain the basic premise of the woods. Um, because I have a copy of it, because why would I not have a copy of this? It's great. Of course, Jerry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's interesting because the game itself is set up as not only a um, miniatures sort of skirmish game, but in the, the, the second edition of The Woods, it also gives you rules if you want to play it as a larger sort of unit-on-unit unit based game, plus a dungeon crawler, plus an RPG Really? All in the one book? All in the one book. So it's it's a lovely little hardback. Which book? Is it one of these books? Is it, it this is book that here? book. It's yeah. just that book. Yeah. It is just yeah. that book. Uh, as it says, the um, the rules included for RPG, skirmish, battle games, details uh, for the background of the world and what's in oh, it. Hold her up there, Jerry, so we get a look at her. Ooh. Is it nice is it, inside? Is it, is it attractive on the inside, is it? It's, it's a mixture of... So oh, nice! That's like it's classic black. fighting fantasy style art yeah, as well. It's it's a really lovely cool. looking book, yeah. yeah. But there's also um, let me try and find a few others because we've got color pictures of some of the stuff as well, like the weird and the wacky, like the trow. Oh, nice! So it's a mixture of, of sort of old school style illustrations in in mm -hmm. various forms. But what I like about it is it starts off giving you a brief sort of description. Um, and when you start to read into it, it goes, okay, here, here are the basic six stats, more on that later. And then they never reference rules or stats again for the next 120 pages or thereabouts, <laughs> as it's just, right. here's this faction. <laughs> here's this faction. Here's their like three or four page background of the faction as a whole. Here's the actual individual units with their stats. But again, you'll find out more later on. Um, there are rules for GM, so it, it's very focused on narrative play. There is a solo, you can play solo as well, but you know, having a GM there, even if you're playing the skirmish on the tabletop, is more important. It, you know, it's telling those stories and getting involved with the various sort of fey folk. These, the um, mercenaries there, the, the sort of weird Italian-esque elves and, and fey going on are, are particularly interesting facts, and I like the raid masters there. Uh, they have a touch of the Carnivale about them. Um, but if we jump into some of the other, so the, the Huldras, some of the factions you'll find are relatively small because it's stuff he's still working on. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some Thrall, ghoulish, vampire-like things there being raised by 
whoever she is. Um, if you go to where are we at, I have no idea where you are currently. Oh, in Paxton. Can we, can we, can, yeah, can we go back just to the woods? Because mm -hmm. then it shows you the actual races. There we are. The goblins so, and the gnomes have some really cool stuff. Goblins and gnomes, the fae, yeah. have some great stuff as well. In fact, they all have great stuff. No, no. <laughs> they're, they're really uh, it's such a, a, a fantastic meshing of European, British folklore and myth. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. most of the stuff we've heard of in Ireland is in here. There are leprechauns in the book, although I don't think there are models for them yet. There are uh, weird Welsh mummers and stuff like that. The, the goblins have a, a great old <laughs> hammer slash Brian Froud feel to them. Uh, they they a, have a labyrinthy kind yeah. of a, a thing yeah. going there, don't they? What, it's nice. No. What's a Welsh mummer? Right, mummers would be like... Um, you know, like carol singers and people like that, except right. mum mummers are, are people who go door to door at things like Halloween or doing splats, that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 like Morris dancers would be a type. If you go to, um, go to the folk. This was the set that I like. <laughs> yeah. there, there's some stunkers in here, but you see the border Morris. There you go. Ah, so, yeah. so, where the, the, the horse skulls and stuff like that. So the horse skull is specifically, it used to be all parts of England, I think, but it more or less, it died out in everywhere except Wales. But they go around at Christmas rather than Halloween. And, uh -huh. and it's a particularly weird thing. I'm not going to pronounce the Welsh version. It's like Mary Lynn or something, but it's probably pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this horse, that was but this horse skull thing will come to your door in the middle of the night with a group of people, and then you, it will force you to have an epic rap battle. So whoever's, whoever's controlling the horse-headed thing will be outside your door, uh, and it'll do a line of poetry, and then you have to return the insult in poetic form and oh. back and forward until somebody fails. If you win, they leave. If they win, you have to let them in. They come in and drink all your beer and then move on to the next <laughs> house. So, so yeah, epic, That's epic cool. undead horse I witnessed battles. something like that in um, uh, Transylvania one year. So I spent Christmas in Transylvania uh, one time. Mm -hmm. And we were up in the mountains and uh, we were staying in a, in a kind of like a, a wee old cottage shack kind of thing mm -hmm. um it was really strange jerry it was it was hilarious because i i walked around the back of it and there was this huge yellow ice block um attached to the back wall now it was at least about four foot by two foot block of yellow mm -hmm. ice and i realized that that was where the toilet flushed out to <laughs> Just nice. night. so it was it was as rustic as anyway um, at Christmas, uh, uh, these dudes came round w again with this kind of horsey, <laughs> scully kind of a thing, and there's uh, a wooden horsey head kind of clappy uh, thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only way we were able to get rid of them was to to give them some of our beer. And um, uh, but they were great crack. Yeah, they were absolutely great crack. But you know, I've become a total convert of uh, the whole premise of carol singing. And uh, often at Christmas, you will find me standing out side andrea's door going i won't go until i get some i won't go until i get some i won't go until i get some so give me some cheer so if you look at the nolocks then look. <laughs> just to bring us back on track there huh? they, uh, the, the no and this is one of the reasons i found this website originally i was looking for little rat dudes with big guns that i could use in nice. fantasy games um and and this is one of the the few companies out there that do little rat dudes and with guns and they also have a, a weird scottish feel with the uh the the tartan and the kilts yeah oh, that's cool yeah. and i just yeah. went oh, these are just adorable i i must have all of these it's this 28 mil stuff isn't it this is all 28 mil now depending on what you're buying it may be bigger or larger so yeah. for example there are, there are pixies in tartan dungarees riding badgers that is a thing they're they're not 28 mil well they're 28 mil scale but they're tiny yeah um, there's the the Edworm, which if anybody is is familiar with the old Great Spine Dragon from GW many moons ago, it's very oh, yeah. heavily influenced by yeah. that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. currently not available, but hopefully Jeff will get that back, uh, cast up again sometime soon. The other day he um, he 
showed off some greens he was working on on his YouTube channel. He's he's doing some um, elven war dancers that are sort of semi Celtic, semi Native American. There's a pixie riding a badger, Jerry. There, there, there are three. <laughs> That's three in a pack. Why would you not have that? So it's three pixies riding three badgers. <laughs> three badgers, legs akimbo, and away they go. It's like Christmas. Oh, yeah. love it. So it's it's just this absolute wealth of unusual um, fey and and mythic and you know mm. you look at it and you're going that these are peculiar and then you start reading the the background that they've built for them and the world they've built um, and it's quite nice I mean fishmen fishmen are always good right so it's yeah who, it's, who, who it, are these guys here just briefly the Huldra. Yeah. Oh, we've the, looked at them. Yeah, no, we've looked at them. Yeah. The, Lots of like undead stuff going yeah. on in there. Oh, so this ghouls is, and thralls and things. So there's going to be some carving stuff eventually in that, by the looks of it. Hopefully, yes. Sort of it, it, it's a matter of as and when he gets to it, mm. um, because that this is his. It's cottage it, industry, it, isn't it, it? It really is cottage industry. When he's not working in the school, he's doing gnomes and you know, uh-huh. fairy elves and and unusual. Doing pixies, things. doing badgers, doing pixies, doing badgers. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's 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 well worth checking out for the unusual. Um, oh, here I want them. We guys with the masks. What are they? the little tiki the, masks? The little tiki masks. masks. Yes, yeah. I oh, like spirit hosts. I've got to get them. You want to meet them down at dungeon? They they're, oh, they're yeah. classic dungeon material there. But there's a lot of stuff in here, and it's just it's it just screams bizarre dungeon um mm-hmm. i mean you can run it as bizarre dungeon the the woods book itself is just fantastic like i say there's 120 pages of essentially background for all of these things of building the world wow. um and when you're reading it you're going that this is just an rpg that can also be played on the tabletop uh, and just that many different ways to play you can play it as a as a competitive you know, one v one game, but I think it it really excels where you're just getting in there and getting the narrative on the table and building these these things and being able to play it with, um, with uh, you know, like playing it with your kids would be quite good because you're you're yeah. weaving the stories and you can bring in the bits and pieces from the sort of the Irish folklore that you know. There's even um, a set of runes that they have, which are just you know, rune carved oh, stones. Cute, yeah. No, they they're mostly they're. They're in here as a little, you know, you can use these to mark specific actions and activations and things because there's an awful lot of actions like coercing and charming or intimidating people. And, mm. You know, it, it's, it's a very RPG feel. But there, there's also rules where it goes, you, you can roll D6 for such and such, or you take your marker rune and set it in the middle and then ta- cast the runes and then the nearest two will define what happens when you do something. And mm. That's so, cool. So yeah. there's a, an additional layer of narrative spell casting or rune casting that i think i think totally you can optional. download a, like a free version of it as yeah. well the, the, yeah the, oh yeah, yeah on the, that page in fact the pdf's there, there so. yeah. so it's, it's worth having a, a butcher's at and it's definitely worth exploring the weird and wacky things that jeff's coming up with well guys there you go go and check out propworkshop.co.uk uh, for a little bit of the weird and the wonderful now to continue our journey of the weird and the wonderful it's time for ben to lead us through the news. Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that you love. It's the News. (laughs) Cool, so we're gonna be kicking off the news for this week with some more stuff from Age of Sigma and the Mortal Realms, as Games Workshop are releasing the sort of elite elements of the Lumineth Realm Lords this weekend for pre-order. Ooh, more Lumineth! More Lumineth, more cow elves for you to enjoy. Move over. Sorry, guys, exactly. I, I, I just yeah. can't resist. Yeah, it's like... Um, so, yeah, um, after that musical interlude, uh, we have some, <laughs> some cool stuff uh, that is going to be leading the way for this particular release. Um, at the head of it are the Venari Dawn Riders, who you would have seen in that starting set that we gave away last week on the show. Uh, these are your cavalry elements for your games. Uh, playing Why games are they riding games. horses? Because they are classic elves in that respect. So yeah. horses are the way forward. So, yeah. You'd probably be better off buying the, the, the pack, though. If yes, they're in the pack. Will. Yeah, they I are will. in that start set, which I'll is open there. it. <laughs> it's like there's one, two, three, four, five guys in that. Yeah. 
And then what's in the actual? I think there's still five in the bundle, probably. But Uh uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So some of this, if you haven't jumped into it, it may be better just to get the actual. Hello, mate. The starter pack. Yeah. You get the other. You get the spell cards and everything as well. So (laughs) I'm having a BBC moment here, guys. (laughs) Right. Go on, and I will see you later. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So yeah. Uh, you get the Venari Dawn Riders, obviously, who are those elite cavalry. So if you if you remember the Illyrian Reavers and the Silver Helms from uh, back in Warhammer Fantasy days, they kind of mash together a lot of those aesthetics while also adding I've got to say the mortal realms. Well. They're beautiful. Yeah, I they think are, they, I think the cavalry are great. They yeah. are absolutely beautiful. There's very little bovine about those guys. Uh, yes, very true. But then it starts to then get fairly bovine when oh, we the- move. When we move towards the Alarith Stone Guard, who are the next set of releases. Uh, so these guys with the hammers that are swinging in to go and kick ass. Um, so as one of my friends said, they're the Hammer Masters um, rather than the Sword Masters, effectively, coming in to fight for the Lumineth Realm Lords. Um, I like everything about them, apart from the weird bull helms that they have at the top. I would just cut those down into conical shapes uh, to make yeah. them classically elven. It's ridiculous. It, and, it is, it, yeah. Uh, and also, what, I think what, one of the cool things... Sorry. What we need is some third-party company to come along and just make some new head heads. Yeah. Yeah. New heads, yeah. Because the like, bodies and everything are amazing. Yeah, yeah, go back to the cavalry, right? Uh, um, uh, these guys here. They are incredible. They are beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. There's nothing about those that that, that makes me squirm or make, uh, it breaks, oh, they're amazing. Uh, you know, breaks my sense of... That they they are in battle. Yeah, they've got intricate and sophisticated um, helms and stuff like that there. But there's there's nothing unbalanced about them. They look uh, they look like uh, they could they could they exist. Ju- they just go look the like next Greek one. helms. Yes, they look and then, amazing. Yeah. And then go to the next one. Yeah, you're you're a bit top heavy. You're definitely going to be like this constantly when you go into it's fight. Ridiculous. <laughs> the, the thing that the th- ridiculous. The thing that's but interesting about that, these. In saying that, sorry, Ben, there were Crusaders and stuff at some point they had stupid things on their helmets. Very true. Well, the Greeks wore willy helmets. Uh, the thing that I was going to say right? about these, actually, I'm being chased by the police for talking about this, but the thing that um, uh, I, was talk- I was thinking about these in terms of like the way they look is that you can see the link between them and the miniature we're going to look at later simply by the use of their hammers. You don't need to have the bull shape thing going on yeah. in the mix there as well. This because too. those guys use big hammers. And so the link between them and the stone guard is the hammers. You don't need to have the big, weird stone, uh, like um, cow head things on the top of their helmets. So. Yeah. But anyway, so moving on to those next models. So we have these ones here, as you can see. So you've got the Alarith, and then this is Avelinor, the Stoneheart King, who is the character that you can make from that set as well. I actually don't mind these either. You know, they kind of got that sort of like a little bit sort of like a a more life look to the tower from World of Warcraft or something. Even this works better, though, because if you look at bulls and whatnot, they do actually have horns. But what they don't have is they don't have horns way up here. So the center of gravity on their head (laughs) is is balanced. Yes, very true. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Whereas that's not the center of gravity has been moved way up. So pull your head about. Yeah. So go back to that big dude there. So those are mountains and bonsai trees on his shoulders, yeah. Bonsai yes. mountains. Uh, how big? How big is this model? I, I imagine for him to to have mountains on his shoulders. Well, he's, that model is going to be like the size of a house, yeah. Well, he's 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 absolutely massive. He's about the size of like a bloodthirster, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and they're the spirits of the mountain, if that changes your opinion on them. But they're, okay, they're, they're very small mountains. All right, so they're, they're <laughs> small mountains. Yeah, yeah. Nice they're very far away. They're fractal. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, and who's this? So that's the Alarith Stone Mage. Um, so last week we saw the the mage, which draws on the sorrow of the Lumineth Realm Lords race in order to hurt their enemies. This is the Alarith Stone Mage, who obviously is a little bit more elemental and is tied yeah. into the idea of the Stone Heart King and that kind of thing. Um, again, the helmet maybe change it, do a little bit of tweaking to it, but um, yeah, you remove the helmet, caster, so. and then paint the cheek guards like hair. It would make a very good model for monkey. Uh, <laughs> <it works>. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. monkey's floating there anyway. It's quite but it's it's mm-hmm. a shame because if we go back to the actual this pack here, for example, 
look at these guys. And I said it last week. These guys look immense. Mm -hmm. These these foot troops here with the with the spears and stuff. They look the great. Yeah. yeah. And these look great. And in fact, that looks great, and this looks great. Everything in this pack looks great. It was only after you ventured <laughs> into this, yeah, these that it started to lose its way, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, they're simple fixes in reality when you think about the hobbying element. I bet you could make those conical quite easily with the, you know, the adept use of a hobby knife. Um, Pencil sharpener. I think but, by, <laughs> I think I would just look for head I think yeah. I think I would just look for alternative heads and just stick them on. Yeah, I think you'll find those heads are probably two piece anyway, simply to get them out of the mold. So I imagine the top piece is separate. Fingers crossed. Well, it might be actually, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Because I've got to say, if we can get rid of the horns. Okay, and I like a horny army uh, uh, as much as the next man. I really, really do. I appreciate a horny army. I just don't appreciate this particular horny army. And if I can get rid of the <laughs> horns on this one, but, this, um, this, this and just, me being yeah. me, if I was doing that to tie them into the 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 Moon Mountain, mm -hmm. make the hammer heads a bull's head. Yeah, and that yeah, seems cool. in yeah. without having to add. And Horn. then they could have just kept the crested helms that the other elves have. In some fashion. I think someone's having a laugh here. Because right? swarms with tassels. I think someone's having a laugh here because if you look at these guys here, they look an awful lot like the knights who say me. <laughs> <laughs> and then these guys have shrubberies grown on them. <laughs> <laughs> There's the link. There's the link. Look, he's literally riding a shrubbery. So that is Roger the Shrubber. <laughs> <laughs> Builds and signs and install shrubberies. Right. Lumineth uh, are. are are getting a big release this weekend, guys. You know, it's um, we'll we'll wait and see, but hopefully there'll be some alternative head options there because I'm sure there will be. It's a beautiful, beautiful army until that that point, and it just did. It, it 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 it's not even a minor detail for me. It it is it is the deal breaker, but it it's hopefully a very easy fix. Hopefully, it's a it's a very easy fix. Right, what's next, Ben? Uh, so next up, we're moving to World War Two. And also looking at some Soviet stuff that Warlord Games have put up for pre-order this week as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, this starts off with this little tiny pack here, which is the Soviet Militia pack, um, nice. which gives you mm -hmm. a set of the sort of militia that has been raised from the fields in order to fight for the glory of the Soviet way. Um, mm -hmm. As the history would go, according to uh, what Warlord Games will say with this, this actually dates back to a tradition back in the 16th century where the Russians then the Soviets as well later in, in life, would raise up the farm workers and all that kind of thing to fight for them. So even if they weren't actually in the army, they were expected to fight anyway. And yeah. according to a little bit of the sort of um, background that they also shared on the sort of how they would have been fighting, they actually went in to fight a lot of the Germans incredibly poorly equipped. Like half of their guns didn't work. They were using makeshift um, sort of melee options and all that kind of thing. You know, well, consider consider. Considering this is the army where some guy ran around with a gun and then another guy ran around with no gun waiting for that guy to get killed so he could exactly. have his gun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really a surprise. One of the other things they mentioned as well is that they were almost tragically brave in that regard. Uh, because they so Because yeah, they so believed in the cause that they basically threw themselves at the Germans. And obviously, you know, Stalin's one of his, his quotes is that uh, quantity has a quality all of its own was yeah. very much a case with not just the actual army, the Red Army, but the rest of the people in Russia as well. So, uh, yeah. But that's that a really cool little off. characterful set anyway. But yeah. The, the set is absolutely fantastic. And there are partisan lists, not just for the Soviets, but I think also for yes. Hungarian and um, Polish fighters in various books. Yeah, and finding yeah. partisan models is incredibly difficult. Mm. Um, I know Jamie Chandler's done a set of polls for the Warsaw Rising, but those could easily be added in, or even mm. um, they'd be very good for things like very British Civil War, just having yes. people yeah. in, I mean, there, Normal there's a couple, that, guns. <laughs> there's a couple there wearing quilted Soviet uniforms, or at least the, the top quilted jacket, which is, sets it to be more Eastern Front. Yeah. But apart from this him, one and this one, yeah. But apart from well, even just apart from the quilted guy, because even yeah. though the top right would do for anybody on the the Eastern Front partisan side, um, you could get away with it just painting that. In I like the last side. with the gun. Every time I look at her, Lord, I, I keep thinking of Granny Johnson. Which one? There's which three. Which one? There's three. That one. That one there. There with the pink apron on. This one. <laughs> 
That's Should Maggie Johnson right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lovely, this, lovely this, this also sort of um, ties into their Stalingrad um, sort of campaign supplement that they've yeah. got in the works and that kind of thing. And it also leads into a larger sort of bonus for those people who want to dive in and actually play as the Soviets um, effectively from one box. So they've got a winter-based Soviet army that you can pick up, which comes with a boatload of infantry as would be fitting. Uh, and you also get a tank and command section and characters and all that kind of thing as well. So it's sort of like a little bit of a one-stop shop for those people that want to dive in and start up a bolt action Soviet army packed with plastic and all sorts of other bits and pieces. That's a hell of a box set there, isn't it? Yeah. But each that's, one of these guys has filth. a gun. Exactly. Yeah, where, it's not historically the, accurate. <laughs> where's the guy who doesn't have a gun and is just waiting for his mate uh, to uh, kick the bucket? They're all dead already. <laughs> yeah. This is the remaining This is group, the second group they, yeah. that lifted yeah. the gun lords. <laughs> That'd be yeah. awesome if you bought a set, of, a set of Russian units and it literally came out of the box and there was no guns. Only enough, <laughs> only enough weapons. <laughs> <laughs> right. Enough next up, three. Ben, what have we got? Uh, so moving on next, we've got a, a sort of new book that came out, uh, which is called Brutality, a Skirmish War Game. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a new system uh, that has been designed to effectively use all the miniatures in your collection that you actually feel that you don't have any use for, uh, or at least they don't have rules for them. So the whole sort of premise behind this is that it's sort of a little bit campaign based, a little bit of a skirmish role, ga role playing game has some sort of RPG light mechanics in there as well, which is really cool as well. And you can sort of genre mash everything together. Like one of the examples that they shared is that you could have someone who is like a ghost buster playing along beside someone who's a barbarian and then someone else who's maybe a knight from sort of history. And the whole sort of idea, and it's kind of tied into the lore that they've got in the book as well, is that it's sort of like this world that is all of a little bit of a mishmash, a little bit like Keyforge, if you remember that card game mm -hmm. that had like paladins fighting alongside um, aliens and little green men and all that kind of thing as well. Uh, so that's all mashed together into that, where you've got the lore in the background of the book. You've also got rules for making your own characters in there too. Um, so you don't, there aren't specific stats for individual characters. You kind of point by the way that you want to have your stats laid out for them as well, which is pretty cool too. And it all ties in together as part of a uh, Facebook group, which is also available for you to go check out, which will be linked in the description down below, where you can go and share some interesting stuff about what you've been building and all that kind of thing as well. Um, but yeah, it's again, another one of these really nice sort of, um, it's a set of rules without miniatures for it because everybody has tons and tons of miniatures out there probably yeah. through Kickstarter campaigns and the like, maybe for board games that you're just not playing, but you can paint them up and use it in this instead, which is really, really awesome. And you don't have to do the whole sort of like um, genre mashing thing. You can play something very, very specifically centered around fantasy mm. or sci-fi or something pulpy as well. And yeah. you'll have just as much fun with it as well. So, yeah. Happy days. A, a reason for sedition wars to exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Three, 3D, 3D printing next. Hello, mate. Uh, yeah. I've, got a, I've got another one has now turned up. <laughs> Come here. The, uh, the, the tiny one has now, has now decided to pop in as well. I'm not having much luck with the, uh, keeping things private. Are you going to say hello? What's that? <laughs> right. Go and see your mommy. Oh, you, she'll be, you can just see people at the background now trying to drag them out to you without being seen. Are oh, you waving? <laughs> Bye-bye, mate. Bye. Next, Ben. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the next thing up we've got is some stuff from the guys at One Page Rules. Uh, now, a lot of people will know them for developing stuff for uh, a set of rules called Age of Fantasy and Grim Dark Futures. And these were effectively rules that were sort of designed so that you could play in sci-fi or fantasy settings using all the stuff that already existed out there on the market. But they've also started to develop their own range of models as well through Patreon and then available later on through CG Trader. The mm -hmm. first set of these that we're going to be looking at and it's available through Patreon this September are the Mummified Undead. Love these. Uh, so these are going to be set up over three months, I think, on Patreon. And mm -hmm. during that time, you're going to be getting access to a whole bunch of different STL files that you can put off at home and use as part of your own big army. This month, you get the sort of mummified leader character, the sort of like king, and then you also get some foot infantry and also some cavalry as well. Um, the guys at One Page Rules have been working with a new 3D sculptor who has designed this range here, and it's very, very nicely detailed. Uh, and a lot of people have already been getting their hands on them and uh, playing around with them in 3D printing land yeah. as well, which is very cool indeed. I'd love to have a go at 3D printing these. Um, yeah. I really like yeah. these, yeah. yeah. 
uh, as I say, a lot of this stuff is also going to be available through CG Trader um, later on down the line if you don't back the Patreon this month in particular. Um, but obviously, those people who back on Patreon get the first dibs on it and that kind of thing. Uh, but this sort of dives into what they try and what they're trying to do in terms of making their game worlds something that actually has miniatures attached to it and stuff that you can play around with that's sort of themed to their art style as well. Because mm-hmm. as well as like Age of Fantasy, they also have things like a skirmish version of the game. There's also going to be like a sort of arena based version. Uh, for both the um, other game for like Fantasy and Grimdark 2. So they're kind of building miniatures that you can use for that and for your large games as well, which I think is really awesome. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they bring back a lot of those memories of Kemri that everybody obviously very much enjoys, which is cool. And also a little bit of the kind of like the mummy vibe about them. I love the sort of like thinking, weird stretched yeah. faces and stuff. It's very Just cool. Just one yeah. step away from Brendan Fraser heading them in the face. <laughs> yeah, these are on the right side of the river, but mm. yeah. Um, as awesome. well as the uh, Mummified and Dead, they've mm-hmm. also got two more options that are available to Patreon backers, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff as well. Um, yeah. But the next set is for the Grimdark Future, and this is the Alien Hives. Uh, so the Alien Hives are their take on sort of like your... Th- I think of these guys a little bit like Tyranids, cut with Xenomorphs, cut with Dinosaurs, which I think is a pretty interesting combination. Mm-hmm. Um, so these are their take on that kind of alien race for using their games. Again, you can use them for Grim Dark Future, the sort of mass battle game. Quite halo looking those. Yeah, they've got a sort of like a little bit of the sort of covenant about them as well, which I think yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, they've got that kind of elite vibe to them, which I think is nice. Um, again, this is themed around the idea of um, sort of doing things over a number of month, months. Sorry, So um, like the Mummified Undead. This is the first set for this month. And then in the successive months, you're going to get additional monsters and creatures like and all those. kinds of things you can add into your I army. really, so, yeah. really like those. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I, what I like about them is that um, they would quite happily sit in a fantasy game. As, yeah, uh, they could uh, as well, yeah. As yeah. much as a, a, a sci-fi game. Mm-hmm. Really like that. Yeah, I really like the sort of animalistic nature to them. And then you also get that sense that there's a bit more sort of intelligence behind them as well, which I think is really nice, which sometimes I guess you, you find a little bit missing in the Tyranids. But then again, that's tied into their theme and all that kind of thing as yeah. well. But yeah, very, very cool miniatures. They can be painted up very, very nicely with contrasts, I think. They were really nice on those. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah. The last set of releases uh, that they've added onto Patreon for backers only at the moment um, is the Warfleet's FTL series. Ooh. So they've done miniature gaming in sort of 28, 38, 32 mil on the tabletop in a sort of traditional style with mass battle and skirmish. They're also now developing their own fleet battle game, which mm-hmm. um, starts off with FTL and may in the future, wink, wink, turn into something else as well. Maybe. Who knows? Um, yeah. Uh, but this is the first set, which is the Empire fleet, uh, which comes with uh, sort of like a set of different capital ships and then also some sort of frigates and sort of smaller craft as well. Um, backers of the Patreon, as well as being able to download these to print up and play around with, uh, they come with both square and circle bases, by the way, and their flight stands and everything as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, but backers of the Patreon will also get access to the early version of the Warfleet's FTL rules so that you can play around with it at home and sort of feed back to them what you think of it through their Discord or through uh, their blogs and forums and that kind of thing as well. Um, again, this is them taking uh, sort of concepts that people really, really like. So they have said that this draws heavily on the idea of things like Battlefleet Gothic uh, and sort of Drop Fleet Commander and that kind of thing, and sort of tying those games in together into a new quick and easy system for you to dive in and play on the tabletop. Uh, and yeah, the Empire looking pretty yeah. awesome. I like the kind of brutalist design. Again, a little bit sort of Halo in look as well. If you think about the UNSC sort of like uh, ships and stuff in that in that game. Uh, but yeah, some really awesome stuff coming out from One Page Rules, and there is a lot more to come as well. Oh, so much more. Oh, yeah. One of the things I like about them is you can. Um, get the basic version of all their games without any frills, bells, or whistles for free Yes, off yeah. their website gratis. Mm-hmm. So you can go in there, you can grab it. If you like what you see, there are essentially bolt-on options that you can pay for. So you can go and you throw them a, a few pounds and, and pick it up from like um, a drive through RPG or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it'll be a, 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 the same basic core rules will be there, but they'll be bolt-on. So they were saying, for example, for Warfleet, they may do something where if people have got the old gothic dice kicking around with the uh, command symbols on them that they, they might do something with that which is an optional extra if you happen to have that 
uh, access to those particular pieces of kit and you want to expand the game and change the direction of the play style then there'll be little bolt-ons like this but the core games the, the the basic games will always be available for free in a, in a playable version it's mm -hmm. not that you need to buy the more complete version to have a playable game they're just nice to have if you like the direction the game takes mm -hmm. yeah. okay next up then what have we got uh, so next up, we've got a little bit of a collaboration, again, between Foreground and one of their indie, design, indie designers uh, and a favourite of Jerry's, Things mm -hmm. from the Basement. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is on their set of Spanish village terrain. Uh, so it all sort of focuses around the big Iglesia Santa Maria church, which is the full-blown one that you see wow. there. And these are all done using the um, sort of base kits from Things from the Basement, but then they get added to with the foreground colouring, as you mm -hmm. can see here. So they come full colour. And also you get the um, sort of like the powder that goes on the side of the walls and stuff as well, which gives you that kind of authentic Spanish sort of Mediterranean yep. feel too. Stucco um, feel. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, they've done, obviously you can see here, the church, but then they've also done a few sort of incidental pieces here and there. They're putting things like courtyards, fountains, and sort of objective places. Um, and as you can see, they've kind of um, put some World War II miniatures into the mix here, because obviously you can mm. throw them into, the, into the, the, the sort of collection if you wanted. But these would also pretty much work for sort of piratical villages in the in the new world as well potentially throw yeah. a little bit of sort of like uh, foliage over these green up a side you know the, the sides of the houses and that kind of thing you'd also get some pretty awesome stuff there because obviously the spanish were over there building all their stuff in the new world it's, so, it's yeah. one of the things i love about that sort of um that style of building it, it works on two continents and you can run pretty much 15th 16th century century onwards so yeah, yeah. both sides you could have your mexican war of independence you could have your like you say blood and plunder style games you could have napoleonic games you could have the spanish civil war spanish civil war yeah so it, it really behooves you i mean by buying it you're saving money then really when you think about you it really which, are. Is, which is <laughs> yeah, the justification really are. i'll be using yeah. you can do you can do the three amigos do the yeah, three amigos. Could do. Yeah. Yep. Throw it into some seven TV, do yeah. something pulpy like that. You know? So it's it's nice to see them uh, finally popping out um, in the colorized version. And also then it means if you don't happen to be in the States, you're not having to pay to ship a block of wood. Yes. <laughs> which is more or less what you're getting. Very so, true. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Next up, um, we have some releases for the Dweg home. Yes, we do. Um, so last Friday, the guys at Parabellum put up two new sets for pre-order over on their web store. Um, so you're able to get your hands on the Herald of Fire and the Fire Forged for use in your games of mm -hmm. uh, Conquest now. So the Herald of Fire sort of changes the direction of the Dwekom on the battlefield. Uh, so one of the things that they tend to specialize in is sort of defensive abilities. Uh, being the sort of dwarf killers that they are and sort of having that kind of heraldry behind them. Uh, but this guy, the Herald of Fire, twists things and he turns them into a little bit more of an offensive um, front fighting force, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so it turns, it turns your Dwekom from guys that sit back at the table and lob missiles at people into yeah. people that rush forward and try and destroy your enemies as soon as they get within range. So it's very, very cool indeed. One of the key things about Conquest is the unit upgrades, which are essentially what the characters are, um, mm -hmm. and, and how they change. Just the simple, the simple mechanic of adding one or changing which one happens to be in a unit changes how that unit can play and, and the the style that your your force mm -hmm. has on the tabletop. It's a very mm -hmm. subtle way of of making uh, sweeping changes. Mm -hmm. The thing I liked about that miniature as well, just in particular, is I like how sort of over the top it is. So, well, I mean, obviously one of the things we've seen in the artwork earlier in the show was mm -hmm. kind of like their sort of bombastic nature of their artwork and that kind of thing. And this guy sort of typifies that, you know, flaming beard, flaming hair, spiky armor that is covered in blood and all that kind of thing. It's uh, very sort of out there and sort of makes a statement, I think, which is very cool. Oh, it and, absolutely is. Yeah. Uh, you've also got the fire forged here. Um, so obviously we're talking about sort of defensive options for the Dwekom. This is their big ranged option that they've got coming to the fore. 
as well, uh, which is kind of out there and, and different, which I think mm -hmm. is awesome. Uh, so this is some heavily armored individuals with, as you can see, big old guns on their shoulders yeah. for blasting things away. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you're going to shoot dragons out of the sky, you're going to need guns. Exactly. Yeah. Um, not, not everybody has a Matthew McConaughey they can see. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to jump out of a helicopter and chase this dragon mm -hmm. through the sky because that's a good idea. Because that's, that's the Dwegham's whole deal in life is the dragon killers yeah. freeing themselves from being servants of the dragons mm -hmm. i picked this up from watching our introductory video oh, hey. hey so if you haven't watched that go and check out because you do get a very it's 20 minutes but you get quite a good grounding in all the factions yeah. within the 20 minutes yeah. i'll also point as well that um while these guys are basically a ranged option they are no slouches in close combat either and uh, they can kick ass uh, in close range as is the Dweg home way. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. Okay, next up, we have an expansion for the Alien RPG. Yeah, so uh, the guys at Free Alligan have put together a new RPG supplement, uh, which is called Destroyer of Worlds. Uh, mm -hmm. As you might imagine, this is quite hair-raising. Um, this is one of their cinematic scenarios. Um, so it's designed that you're probably not going to make it out the other side okay. intact or mm. alive. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, and so this set um, has you playing as colonial marines uh, who are sent to try and deal with some weird happenings on a distant planet, only to find out that, yep, xenomorphs are involved again, uh, and they're probably going to hunt you down and kill you. Um, so yes, it's fun, in inverted commas, for those who <laughs> Sound more if looks like it's smiling though, so it's obviously happy. Yes, yeah. Hey, you guys! Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! It's, yeah. it's confetti cannon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the Marines are just you know gutted because they forgot. They're just so them. happy to see them. Yeah, it's like, hey guys, it's Barry. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so inside the set, you're going to get um, five pre-generated characters. Um, so it works with six people in total because one person will play the game mother, as they have titled the person who takes control of it. Uh, uh, I got also get a bunch of maps and player aids for you to get stuck into as well. It does require you to have either the core rules or the starter set in order to play, but mm -hmm. the starter set is pretty bonkers anyway. You get all the sort of basic rules in there. You get a whole bunch of pre generators and a big mission to play through as well, which are written by like a high-end sci-fi author, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then of course, you've got the core book, which is the big fancy book for everything that you want to yeah. do. Um, you can also go beyond sort of their cinematic scenarios and play through a proper sort of old style um, RPG campaign if you wanted to. Um, so there's rules in there for that and cinematic scenarios if you want to do that too, which is very Fantastic. cool. But yeah, aliens, man. Amazing. Aliens. And if people are interested in running campaigns and that sort of thing, the guys from uh, Free Alligan had like an hour long chat about running horror RPGs at Virtually okay. Expo, which we have on our YouTube channel. So you yeah, can go we back get a link to that. I'll link that down below. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you can go and have a look at, at some of the things that Very they, they talk about. Yeah, especially because they had the, the writer for Aliens there. So it was, yeah. it was fascinating to see how he was broaching the horror as an RPG. So it, was yeah, it is a challenge as well, that kind of horror aspect. So uh, getting it right yeah. is something that's interesting to research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Does Warhammer 40k rock your world? Check out store.ontabletop.com today, where you can save up to 20% across a wide range of hobby games, tools, and paints, including Warhammer 40,000, Age of Sigmar, Star Wars, Flames of War, Bolt Action, and many other incredible ranges. We are based here in Northern Ireland and rated 5 out of 5 on Trustpilot. Okie dokie. Well, that wraps up the news. Um, to finish out the show, Ben, time for a couple of Kickstarters. Who are we watching this week? So uh, we've got two to choose from. One of them is, I guess you'd say, more modern. And the other one is definitely very traditional. Uh, so the first of these is from the guys at Titancraft. Mm -hmm. And they are designing a set of customizable monster minis through their program, which is called Titancraft. Um, you can actually try it out on their website right now as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, so the idea is that they wanted to um, create a program that would allow you to not only get your big boss monsters printed for your D&D &D games and your sort of skirmish games, mm -hmm. but also play around with the proportions and mess around with them so that you can make characterful looking individual miniatures that fit your campaigns, your themes, and your designs. Wow. Uh, and so they're starting off with um, some sort of classics that you would know. So dragons, beholders, 
and that kind of thing as well. But then they're developing it even further by adding in additional things as things get unlocked. And they have done pretty well on Kickstarter to date. Um, as it stands, the program will allow you to play around with beholders and stuff, but they are going to be doing some things where you can sort of play around with dragons and that kind of thing. I like this. When you see this comes back up, this this beholder on legs. Is it looks so yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's one of the things you can do with this. So you don't just have to have your typical beholder. You can play around and add horns and add different eye stalks. And they've also talked about doing things like battle damage and that kind of thing as well. And then oh. once you've decided on how you want your model to be designed, They'll then 3D print it for you and send it off to you, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah. I don't um, think the tricorn hat worked on that first beholder with wings. Now, if it had been a <laughs> bowler hat, yeah. bowler hat would have been amazing. I mean, you know, <laughs> we have seen beholders who are the head of crime syndicates yeah. in D&D, so why would I just they not? Have, I really exactly. want to see one with a, a yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, as I was, give this a go. Yeah. Um, as I was saying, um, it's... It, it's, a re- it's a really interesting program that I think has a lot of potential. It's a little bit like when we first saw um, Hero Forge when it first came out. Mm. It, mm-hmm. it, it, it sort of originally looked very basic, but obviously when you actually think about it, in, it there's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes for all these kind of things, and they will develop and grow as people back them and sort of get involved with it. And well, I think there, there, really... there, There's way more going on here than in Hero yeah, Forge. Oh, yeah, more. in terms of all the posing and all that kind of thing for everything and the sort of the moving of the... Owned, you know, there's... Yeah. You know, they're, they're, oh, it's, it, this is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, oh, and you can download and 3D print it, 3D print it at home. That was going to be... You can do that as well, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. So, um, so, yeah, they've really gone to town on sort of um, sort of pushing what they what you can do with monsters, which I think is really interesting. Because obviously, a lot of people like the idea of kit bashing and tinkering with things in plastic and metal. But with 3D printing becoming such a big thing nowadays, it makes sense for there to be this yeah. kind of program out there for people to play around with. And it does feel very um, sort of user-friendly as well. Um, so what is the you, Kickstarter actually for? Access so the kick, to the app or what? So the Kickstarter will allow you access to sort of additional stuff as it gets unlocked and also for helping them uh, sort of develop it, the program as a whole. Mm-hmm. So you'll, get, you'll not only be helping them unlock additional stuff, but you'll get early access to that kind of two bits and pieces of the program and things going forward uh, and that kind of stuff as well. So, so I have I have the program. This is the program here. So you can this, click this is, open oh, and play. I want to move on to good prize now. It should be in here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this. these are some of the presets and stuff. And then once you open them, you can sort of play around with the placement of things. And obviously, as I was saying, it's sort of in its early stages. Um, so there will be a couple of tweak, uh, tweaks here and there that need to be ironed out. Um, but um, it's generally just a nice little um, sort of thing to play around with and get a sort of handle on how it all works. And um, as I say, seem to have a lot of people backing them on Kickstarter. So uh, hopefully this will turn into an interesting program that will, you know, be on par with something like Hero Forge in the future. Yeah. So, yeah. This is uh, very interesting. Mm. Okay. Obviously, I know you like your monsters, Warren. So this yes, might be I something do, to play yeah. around with. So. I'm looking at this <laughs> thinking, I, I want to get in. After this show's over, I, that my next part, spot is going yeah. to this site to try this. <laughs> out. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. Get yeah. The idea. yeah. Right. So, uh 27 days left funded guys. Um that may be one a lot of us will, will want to get stuck into. Right, Ben, what's our last one? So, the second one of these is by Thomas Foss and uh, Skull and Crown. And this is called Killer Rabbits 2: Who Letteth the Hounds Out. Right. So, <laughs> I, th- I think a couple, maybe a year ago, maybe only a couple of months ago, we looked at um, the first Kickstarter for this. It was either in the news or it was as part of a weekender where we looked at the development of medieval rabbits designed based on the manuscripts from the period. Mm-hmm. In the second one, as the title will suggest, you're going to be uh, building up an army of hounds based oh. on miniatures from medieval manuscripts. <laughs> <laughs> So not only have they designed a bunch of troops, but they've also designed characters, there's siege weapons, there's mounted dogs on rabbits, because that's what they <laughs> saw in their manuscripts, man. Uh, and they've properly designed this as a little well, bit of a sort of grudge match between uh, rabbits equal, and hounds. Equal so, opportunities uh, here. We've got rabbits riding dogs as exactly, well. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously... We've got rabbits uh, riding people. Yeah. Yep. So the sort of theme behind this 
uh, as I was saying at the start, is drawn from the medieval manuscript art that you would have seen on all those tapestries and that kind of thing, and inside the books and the illuminations and stuff, where clearly the artists back in those days were on something uh, yeah. because they wanted to show off really interesting and vivid scenes using creatures from the local area. But, um, yeah. A lot of it actually did mean <laughs> something as well. Which is, yeah, so who knows what it meant? But yeah. it, it would generally be little... Um, it would be embellishments they would add that's cool, around yeah. the, the outside edges of bookwork. So they do very, you know, important. And in a lot of cases, these were monks. They would do, you know, illuminations for a holy book. And then just in the, essentially in the footnotes or in the side or around the margins, you would get these little weird illustrations for whatever reason. So and here's a good example. Like you've literally got the illustrations in the background yeah. and, then the, and then the rabbits in the foreground. I like but, the bondage expansion. That's cool. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. It's good. I mean, it's not alone there. You can go back if you missed the previous one. I want one. them for my dungeon. So If you missed the previous one, you can get the, the last set. So yes, you can, can get yeah. the rabbits. And there are things like um, a human, like you were saying, about the human being ridden by a rabbit. They have the human who was being tortured to death by rabbits in here. Uh -huh. So he's pinned to the ground and being dealt with. Mm -hmm. But um, even things like the, the MDF, so the, the castle and the trebuchet and that sort of thing, and tents are all 2D. You know, they're, they're, they're based on the illustration and they've just been laser cut in oh, 2D, which yeah. is just so cute <laughs> in, in so many ways. You could Tom only play it on one plane of existence. That's the <laughs> <laughs> so um, so Th Thomas does a lot of stuff like this. It's uh, Skull and Crown Miniatures is his company, if memory serves. Uh -huh. And he's he's done a whole range of undead, again, based on medieval manuscript illustrations. So you, you get these very stylized looking skeletons with darts mm. and that sort of thing. But they're just a, a fantastic set. I, yeah. I was looking at these earlier going, well, you know, what if you replaced a halfling army with nothing but rabbits? Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that's well, doable. Guys, Thomas Foss, Skull and Crown, Killer Rabbits 2. It's funded. <laughs> got 18 days left. Go and get stuck in. Right, guys, look, massive thank you for joining us uh, uh, again this evening for the weekend. Um, remember to come on over to XLBS. I've got some cool stuff. It's my turn this week to talk a little bit of hobby. Um, uh, so I've got some, what, well, what I can consider cool stuff to show. And uh, yeah, very much looking forward to that. So massive thank you to the team as always for uh, a, a wonderful guide through what happened this week. And a huge thank you to you guys at home. Stay safe and happy gaming. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.